year and a half since I originally documented the build of my rifling tool. There's been some improvements to the to the function and design. The cutting method is a constantly evolving thing. I've gone from a masonry bit on the very first attempt to hacksaw blades on a second attempt. And this third attempt is a piece off of a sawzall blade, carbide tip teeth, little tiny piece with two teeth left on it. And that'll slip into that slot right there on top of the shaft. And then I have a little half round piece that I filed out that matches the corresponding notch in the bottom. And with paper or shim stock, I'll be able to increase the diameter of this to press the teeth tighter against the barrel or deeper into the barrel and produce the grooves that I want. This is uh, for the latest build that I'm doing. It's a 3D caliber semi automatic handgun, loosely based on some plans that Professor Parabellum has published. It, uh, in this case, I'm using a solid aluminum uh, frame that I've milled out with the with the wood router and uh, hopefully get that barrel done today and carry on with the rest of the build. Some things change and some things stay the same. In this case this has stayed the same. It's a very effective way of determining the twist rate in a barrel. Just a piece of pipe with a quarter inch rod wrapped around it and tacked every so often. So simple to do. You just Take the pipe, determine what your twist rate will be, wrap some string around to match that, mark it with a sharpie, and then you can hand form these quarter inch rods, uh, they're fairly soft, and clamp and tack, grind off the high spots, and that's your twist programming right there. Cutting grooves in a barrel by hand is not so easy. It takes very small cuts. Um, in order to get it smooth, a little chattering, you have to make a nice smooth pull. And I was never happy with that method, so I always intended to mechanize it in some way. And I had thought about using a long lever or a hydraulic ram and settled on a simple threaded rod to act as a drive screw or a lead screw attached to my drill. Very, very simple. The only thing that I had to determine was how to attach these two different rotating pieces together. And here's how I did it. That's the part that I want. At this point I have the, the bottom bracket of the bicycle cut off and working away at the weldments, the tubes that were welded onto it. And you can see why this was a no longer functional bicycle. It, the bearings are dry, a little rusty. This will clean up okay for my purposes. My homemade thrust bearing is complete. I took the fixed cup from the bottom bracket and welded it to the top of the shaft that has the program twist rate on it. So I'm going to grease these before I put it together finally. So that goes there. This happens to be a opposite thread. So the idea is that this will turn freely with the, with the threaded rod to retract the, the twist rod up. So just each one can turn at its own speed and it uh, works pretty smooth. first rifling attempt on the new fancy machine.
told that cigarette papers are a good way to increase the size of the cut or the depth of the cut. So for the first time in my life I picked up a package of cigarette papers and uh, I measured them out at one thou. So we'll see how this works. Well, I can tell I made a cut because I could feel the resistance on the drill. I made the first pass with a single layer of cigarette paper and I definitely see six nice rifling grooves in the barrel. This is uh, double wrap of paper so it's about two thousandths deeper. And I'm seeing little shards of metal that are coming off from inside the barrel so I know it's cutting something. And next index mark.